Hello everyone, this is Ron from Makata USA. Um, I promised you guys some videos on uh, the V-Control Touch and um, how to actually get um, do setups and go through uh, adding applications to the radio and things like that. Um, this radio is uh, the newest one from Mikado and it offers some pretty amazing features. Um, there's no performance increase uh, versus the V-Control and the V-Control Touch as far as your flying experience, but the actual being able to be connected to the model and being able to get to things quicker and being able to do setups quicker and things like that are, are definitely a plus with this radio versus the V-Control. Um, both excellent radios. Um, you just decide which one you want to go with. But this video is mostly, mostly going to touch on the V-Control Touch and um, how to use it and how to set it up. Okay, so <clears throat> this one is going to be just the basic setup of, of a helicopter. Um, this is the V-Control Touch uh, in white. And this is my Logo 550SX. As you guys can see, um, I kind of I took the blades off and everything because that's basically how you should always do a setup with uh, blades off of the machine until you absolutely need them, which is for setting pitches and ranges. But um, I'm gonna start with how to how to uh, do a basic setup on this guy. I've already saved my setup to the hell to the uh, V Control Touch, so I'm gonna start with a whole brand new setup, and go through everything from the beginning, so you guys can see what that looks like. All right, so <clears throat> first thing. Um, one of the cool features of V-Control Touch is obviously if it's connected to a helicopter and you turn on the helicopter, um, if it's bound to the helicopter, I should say, it'll scan while it's in dormant. It'll scan the band and look for any power. And when you power up the helicopter, the V-Control Touch will power up as well. And then connect and like you get about a three second boot time from the whole time it comes up, which is really cool. So it's come up. It's ready to connect it, it's ready to go. It's giving me a warning until my battery's not charged, which I haven't charged the battery since the last time I flew it, so it's just a setup, so it's not that big of a deal. But we're gonna start with a whole new setup and show you how that goes from the beginning. Okay, so first thing you do um, whenever you do a setup is you wanna start with a brand new setup. So in the control touch, you can slide this over and you go down to model setup, you tap model setup, and you wanna hit new model setup. When you do that, it's gonna ask you if you wanna start creating a new setup. And it's gonna un unplug the motor cables and all that little stuff to keep the helicopter from spooling up. I have the um, blades off of it, so even if it spools up, it's not a big deal, nothing's gonna happen. So I'm gonna hit start new, create new setup. And then it's gonna ask me what helicopter it is. So in V-Control Touch, there's a bunch of preset helicopters and then there are some that are just other helicopters on top of it, and then the big scale at the end. So if you have a logo machine, you just pick the one it is. If you don't have a logo, then you pick other whatever it is on the side um, up to the right, and it'll tell you what other 700, 600, 500, whatever you want to do. Now, the, the, these starting points are just starting points. That's just what they are. They're basic values for what they think a 600 size machine or 700 size machine should be. And for a logo, it has a few extra things because they know the characteristics of a logo. So it'll give you a lot of stuff that you don't have to do if you're doing a normal setup. Like it already knows that you have a counterclockwise um, spinning helicopter. It all automatically knows um, that you have, uh, I'm sorry, a clockwise spinning helicopter. It automatically knows um, which way the wire is gonna be up and facing a certain way. So there's things that it already knows. So you'll see that when I select it. So I select Logo 550. It sends the data directly to the Neo and then it starts the setup. So basically what it's doing now, it's wiping the Neo clean and it's gonna start from the beginning all over again. So you say it's sending data, give it a few seconds here and it'll be done. Uh, it's a little bit quicker when you have a, a brand new Neo because um, there's nothing in it, but I had to, I'm basically erasing my setup and starting over again. Okay, so the first thing that comes up is the name. So you can choose to edit the name if you want to. If you tap it, you can change it to Logo 500. Um, mine is Logo 550SX, but since I'm gonna reload my file, I really don't have to rename this model, but just to show you what it's gonna be, I'll just go back and I'm gonna go, um, I'll change it to 550, and then SX. Uh, let's do, I'm gonna make it capital. How about that? So, SX. And then you can hit enter, and now the name has changed to logo 550 SX, okay? So now it's asking me the next step is face up wires to the front. That means on your helicopter, is the, hel is the Neo gonna be straight uh, facing upwards or upside down? And if you wanna change it, depending on the helicopter, you use to select whatever that's gonna be. It's face up wires to the front. If you look at the picture, it shows you. Uh, face up wires to the rear. That means that you're looking at the back of the helicopter it, it, with these pictures, by the way, from the back towards the front. 
and then face up, uh, face down wire to the front or face down wire to the rear. Mine is going to be face up with the wires to the front. So that's what it is. Um, that's how it's mounted on my helicopter, as you can see. Face up with the wires to the front. And then that's what I select. Now, this is very important that you select this correctly because if you don't, the gyros and everything will be backwards. You'll have a helicopter that tries to tip over on flight and um, or try to take off and things just will not work like they're supposed to. So make sure you take into consideration what you're doing here. I've already chosen that, so I'm just gonna select it. Now, one cool thing here is if you select and you push and hold a button, it'll give you an, a secondary option, like a secondary menu, kind of like an expert menu. Not really expert, but like a secondary menu. And this is if you have an external sensor, you can set the orientation for an external sensor. I don't have one, so I have um, external sensor not selected is what mine is. Also, if you make a selection and you don't want to make a change, you can just tap away from the screen and go from the thing and it'll go back to where it was. So you don't have to worry about picking something back in there how to X out of it. Okay, so I know that you have a clockwise main rotor. It already knows that, but if you didn't know that, you can change it to counterclockwise if you wanted to. You just pick it and then it would be counterclockwise. But I know it's clockwise, so we're going to go back to that for this particular helicopter. That's the basic setup for just the first part. So then you just scroll up. Everything is just in this menu. You just scroll up, which is really nice. It makes it really easy to see. Um, I'm going to select what type of swash plate I have. So if I have a, a different degree swash plate, this is looking straight down on top of the helicopter with the nose in front. HR3 is um, the normal 120 degree um, orientation with the, the uh, elevator reverse is what they call it. The elevator is in the rear of the helicopter. So um, that's what the logo is set up, the Logo 550. You see there's all the options for H4, H3, 135, 135 normal, H1 mechanical, whatever you want. So whatever your helicopter is, that's what you select for that. Mine is HR3, so I'm going to leave it there. Uh, one really cool thing you can see is obviously you got the secondary menu you can play with, and you can change the angles for each one. So like if you got a five-bladed helicopter or a multi-blade helicopter and you need to get the phasing correct because it's not done mechanically, then um, you can actually change the phasing in this to get it to where you need it to be. I don't have to change anything, so I'm gonna get out of that. All right, so one cool thing you need to look at as well is if you look right here, you see the numbers on the screen, one, two, and three. Those are the numbers that correspond to where you plug the servos into the Neo. So the elevator would be number one, the left aileron, if you're looking straight down on top of the helicopter with the nose to the front, would be number two, and the right aileron would be number three. You plug those in this way, you never have to worry about if the servos are plugged into the right port. It does, it'll tell you exactly where it is. So if you select this, and let's say I say I choose number four or whatever, it's the same thing. You look at the, the numbers. One is here, two is over here, three is up here, and four is over there. That's where you would plug the servos in. And then correspondingly, everything would work like it's supposed to. So I'm going to go back to my 120 degrees swatch plate. So I got that, and I'm good to go. All right. So the next thing is um, the server reversing. Okay, so if you look right here, it says reverse, reverse, normal, normal, whatever. Channels one through four. All right, four is not going to be used, so it's just channels one, two, three. So the way to check this is all you have to do is push the collective stick up, and whatever servo doesn't go up. So I'm going to push the stick down, and so all my servos went up. So I'm going to push the stick up, which is what direction I'm looking for. All those servos went down, which means I need to reverse every servo that doesn't go up. So that means I need to reverse all my servos. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit select and I'm going to just click the thing here to reverse whichever ones are checked. And now that all the servos are checked and everything's like it's supposed to be, now I'll go back here and I move this collect stick down. Everything goes down, move it up. Everything goes up, right, left, back, forward. So everything's correct by just moving that. So now you put the servos in the right ports. You've adjusted the servos to whatever they need to be. Whichever one doesn't go up, you just reverse it and it makes it really easy for that. Um, so that's all the directions are set. The next one is your trim values. Okay, so this is where the trim needs to be set at zero. And this is how you start with your setup. At this point, you would build your linkages from your servos to the swash plate. That linkage right there. You start with the recommended Mikado values. And then you put a swash plate leveler on your head. You slide it down and make whatever adjustments mechanically to that, to that servo. You see, you get the servo at 90 degrees. Um, does it have to be dead nuts perfect 90 degrees? No, it doesn't. But as long as you have full travel and it's not binding one way or the other, you're good. But um, perfect, perfect uh, servo geometry is always a good thing to do. Um, so you give, build your swash plate linkages from the swash plate to the servos. 
and you make sure the swatch plate is level at this point right now. So when you enter the trim value, what's gonna happen is, when, you, when you've entered the trim like this, or you tap onto it, you get to it, it shows you where the trims are, and it also takes the swatch plate to what it thinks is level, okay? And it moves the servos to whatever 90 degrees that they think it is, and this is where you build your, your linkages. So once you've built the linkages, this is what it thinks 90 degrees is, and which is also what it thinks zero is on the pitch and level on your swatch plate. Once you've built the linkages, you put your swatch plate level on, you adjust everything, get it perfect. Then you build the linkages from the swatch plate to the head to make sure you have zero degree pitch at, at this um, particular part in the, uh, the setup. You wanna put a blade on, put a pitch gauge on it, check it, make sure you have zero pitch with the orientation just like this with the, with the blades coming towards the front and the rear of the car, uh, helicopter, they're facing the boom. Uh, they're parallel with the boom, I apologize. Once you get that one at zero, you spin the other one around to the same orientation, make sure it's in, in the middle, and you wanna check the pitch on that blade as well. Once you get that blade at zero, now everything is zero and mechanically correct. At this point, everything else should fall in the line. Assuming that your, your distance on your balls for the geometry and everything is correct, everything should fall in the line, your pitches should be good, your, everything should feel good in flight, there should be no weird tendencies, nothing strange. Okay, so this is at zero. I've already leveled my swatch plate. I've already put it to where it needed to be, and I've already checked zero pitch at, at this thing, so I already know that my, my setup is correct as far as that's concerned. So now, um, if you wanted to make an adjustment, you can, because sometimes you can't get it dead and that's perfect, but I will show you a trick for Mikado helicopters. Okay, so let's say um, you put your, your pitch gauge on and you're half a degree off. Uh, a half a degree, you can't get sometimes with a full turn because your, your linkages are indexed. There's a small side and a big side. The big side goes to the ball, so it snaps on, it holds it. If you push it through, you run the risk of the, the, the thing failing because what the, the link failing because it's actually been pushed out too far and it's not gonna work. So you need to make sure that on a Mikado helicopter, you make sure whenever you put the linkage on, you see the number on the outside. So like if you, if you look here, it's kind of hard to see, but you'll see the number on the linkage. It says 2.5. You know that's on the outside. You know you got the linkage on correct. Okay, so um, anyway, so if you can't get that half a degree on a, on a helicopter, if you take this one full turn and it's one degree over or half a degree over and you take it one full turn out and it's one half degree less, what you can do is you can actually remove the screw right here with the ball that's already inside of the linkage. You can remove that screw with the linkage and the ball inside the linkage, turn the linkage one half degree or one half turn because it doesn't affect the actual linkage itself and screw it back in and that'll get you back to zero. And that's how you can do it mechanically and get away with it um, on a Mikado helicopter. Some other helicopters do the same thing, but that on a, on a logo, um, that's actually a pretty cool feature that um, some people uh, kind of miss a little bit. So back to, um, back to the trims. Your trims are at zero. If you had to make an adjustment and it had to be electronic because you just, hey, you didn't want to do anything, you can make adjustments here. You go up and down, you can trim on the, um, uh, up and down, you can see the, the numbers, you see the trims going up and down and things like that. And what it's doing is moving the swatch plate as I'm doing that. And that's how you can make adjustments if you really wanted to electrically. If you did that, you want to make absolutely sure that the numbers are below 40. If the number is above 40, when the, when the uh, fly barless unit is actually using the servos, it can actually push the, uh, the servos past the point where they actually do a useful signal and they'll go limp. So in flight, you'll have an unexplained failure and you won't know why. And well, that's one of the reasons because you've pushed the servos past what they can do because of a bad setup. This is why you always want to try to do it mechanically perfectly. That way you never have to worry about the servos being out of their, their spec range or anything like that ever happening. So an old way to check that is if you click out of this and you go to, um, go to let's say, um, the trim and then hold it down, that takes you to the actual numbers themselves. And if you look on the screen, you see what it says, negative 60, negative 60, that's way outside of spec. So what you need to do is just go back to the trim and hit reset, and then do everything back to how it was, make everything mechanical, make everything zero, and then your setup will be perfect as far as that's concerned. You'll never have to worry about any weird issues in flight. Okay, next thing. Your collective minimum and maximum. Okay, so how this works. When you're doing the collective minimum and maximum, what you're doing is you're setting how much collective you actually wanna run whether that's um, uh, 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 14 degrees, 13 degrees, whatever you wanna do, that's a positive and a negative right here. You see the two, the two uh, min and maximum. Okay, so when you move your stick down, 
you see the negative go to 100, right? And when you tap this, you can move this, this thing up or down like this, and that'll actually, you check with your pitch gauge on your blade, and you check and see how much negative pitch you have, all right? So let's say it's at 100, and that's where I want it to be. Then you move your stick up, and it goes to positive, same thing. Then you can move it up or down and get the, the positive and the negative collective the same on top. It'd be 14 degrees, 13 degrees, 12, whatever you want to run. Make sure they're the set on each one. But you have to move the stick up or down in order to activate the menus, as you can see. If it's in the middle, nothing actually goes, allowed me to touch the screen and show you what I was talking about without actually making any adjustments. Move it down, the negative comes up. Move it up to the top, positive comes up. It's also imperative that you calibrate your sticks on your radio because that's what it's looking for the endpoints in order to activate some of these things. Sometimes they don't work. Okay, so cyclic. This is the eight degree mark that the cyclic is looking for. Okay, so when you hit this checkbox, it takes the swatch to plate to what it thinks is eight degrees. Okay, so that's when you put a pitch gauge on your, your blades and you check and see if it says eight degrees. If it's not, then you take and you come over here and you click this and you move the slider up and down until you see it eight degrees. You see as I'm moving the slider, see how it's moving the swatch plate more or less? Okay, so that will get you to where you need to be um, for your eight degrees. Eight degrees is not how much cyclic pitch you're gonna be use, using. It's a, it's a reference point for the V-bar. It knows where basically the center point of eight degrees is if you wanna think about it that way. It's just asking where that is. It's very imperative that you get this correct. If you don't get this right and you have a model that can't handle it, like if you try to overdrive the servos with a higher cyclic value than what happens, you can get blade strikes. So um, eight degrees is where you wanna be with this and that's where you wanna uh, um, set everything to. And when you're done, you hit unchecked and it takes everything back to zero. So this is a check. This is unchecked. You see the swatch plate move. All right, so next one, tail rotor setup. All right, so now you have to choose what type of tail rotor you have. I don't have one selected right now, which is a cool thing now. What they've done is they've gone in and they've removed a preset setting so you don't burn up a tail servo, okay? So the tail servo I have on this helicopter is a Savox Digital but it's a 1500-333 micropulse servo, okay? So 1520 micropulse and 333 hertz. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna select 333, 1500 to 1520, okay? And then I'm gonna check and see if it's working like it should, okay? Now, I see the servo is working like it should. It's not hot, it's not doing any weird stuff. All right, so that's also a feature they put in V-Control as well, so it's not just V-Control touch. They did that, V-Control did that as well. They put that in there to keep you from burning up tail servos. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the tail setup and I'm gonna show you um, a couple of things on how to set that up. Okay, the first thing is you need to know if it's going the right way or not, okay? So on this helicopter, when you set your tail up, you just need to make sure you get full throw left and right without binding, okay? So yes, it's nice to have the servo at 90 degrees, but it's not absolutely necessary as long as you get full throw left and right. When you get to this menu, you see the left limit in the radio and the right limit are at 40, okay? So it barely moves whenever you do anything. So if you go left and right on your sticks, it barely moves, okay? How do you know if the tail is correct? Okay, I've done this video um, by itself once before, but I'm gonna put it in here so everybody can see and everybody can understand how it works. Okay, so what you're gonna watch is the trailing edge of the top blade, okay? I don't have any tail blades on here, but the trailing edge on this logo, which means the skinny part of the blade is gonna be facing the front of the helicopter, okay? That means this part of the blade, the skinny part, when you install the blades, is gonna to be towards the front. So you stand the blade straight up and down, and so you're looking at the skinny part of the top blade. Now, it doesn't matter if you have a helicopter that rotates forward, like, I mean, reverse like this on a, on a logo, or it could be forward like it is on a Synergy, or it could be on the opposite side of like a TDR, it does not matter. As long as you look at the trailing edge of the top blade, you'll never ever go wrong, okay? So what you wanna do is if you move your stick left on the, on the radio, move that stick left, this trailing edge should go left. If it does, you need to reverse the servo. So I'm gonna move it left and it went right, okay? See how that's backwards? The trailing edge, which is this part, should be going inwards, but it's, when I move the stick left, it's going right. So I wanna reverse that in the screen. So all I gotta do is go up and tap it, reversed. Same servo direction, yes, done. Now when I move this, tail left, it goes left. When I move it right, it goes right, all right? So another way of knowing if the gyro is correcting correctly is what I'll, I'll show you that at the end, but all you have to do is you pick up the tail and you're gonna make a movement with it and watch the tail again. 
basically when you pick the tail up like this and you move the tail to the left, the trailing edge should go left. And when you move the tail to the right, the trailing edge of the top blade should go to the right. Now it's not gonna do anything now because it's in the setup mode, but I'll show you at the end how correct it is. Okay, the next thing you wanna do is set your limits, okay? Now this is gonna be kind of hard with one hand, but basically you're gonna set and hold your stick to the left and it opens up your left limit, okay? And then you adjust it by touching the screen, just up and down until you get full throw without binding, okay? Do the same thing with the right, move your stick to the right, and it does sets off the right limits, you do the exact same thing. Once you have your maximum limit left and right, that means the tail is set up, it's done. That's all you need is the maximum limit in the correct direction, okay? Now, the next thing is your governor setup. The governor I have on here is the Scorpion Tribunus, which is really cool because I can set everything up from the radio, okay? So I can hit select, and I wanna ask what kind of, what kind of um, um, the, uh, governor do I wanna use? I wanna use an external governor, which is the governor inside the ESC, or do I wanna use a V-bar governor? Fully integrated. So I wanna use the V-bar governor, which is what's selected already. If you wanna change it, you just hit external governor, and it'll send the data, and it'll do external if that's what you want it to do. I want to do um, the V-bar governor. You heard the Tribunus reset because it's supposed to, because it's basically taking it and understanding what you want. So I'm going to do this one more time, put it on the V-bar governor. Okay, so it's going to reset it one more time. All right, so now um, once that's set, now I set my output setup. Okay, this is the endpoints. The endpoints with the Tribunus, you just leave them at 100 and 100. You don't need to do anything. But if you want to calibrate the an ESC, let's say if you have like a castle or something, you want to calibrate for a hobby wing, you want to calibrate it, you basically, you can control the collective. You push this, this button here, and once you push the stick down, and it'll allow you to enable direct throttle and hit yes. Now, if I do that and I touch the stick, you see the helicopter start to spin up. You hear it? Okay, because that means the collective stick is now directly controlling the output of the ESC. So you have to make sure that you turn that off when you're done. But that'll allow you, when this is on, you can disconnect the ESC, turn it back on, and it'll allow you to, to, um, to do the, the uh, calibration. The same thing with the ESC setup. You can go through the ESC setup and do the exact same thing, but it'll allow you to calibrate the ESC if you wanted to do that. Sometimes you can do it without turning the, the, uh, the NEO off, like if you have a secondary power source, like a, a, a 2S LiPo, and you want to just disconnect the ESC and then power it up, you can do that, and then you can do it this way. Otherwise, you need to, to do the ESC setup was in order to do that. So you set your endpoints that way if you want to. Uh, let's go back to this one more time because I just told you about um, setting that up and I didn't turn it off. Okay, all right, so collectively, okay, it went off automatically, which is awesome, all right. So that's done. All right, so the next thing you wanna do is set up your gear ratio. All right, so because it's a logo, it already knows what the gear ratio is. It puts in 152, 3-2 um, gear ratio. Uh, I don't have a 13 tooth pinion on my, I have a 16 tooth pinion, so I'm gonna move that up to 16. And that changes the, the gear ratio for it, so you don't have to figure it out anymore. The um, poles or the motor poles, if it's five poles, uh, if it's a 10-pole motor, whatever the, the magnet poles of the motor are, you cut it in half. So you see the magnet poles is 10, and the regular pole pairs, what they're asking for is five. So that's what the, the V-bar needs to see. And that will allow you to set up the gear ratio correctly for your particular helicopter. Once that's done, your setup is, is complete. It's done. There's nothing else next to do. So you go back to the main screen, and now we're gonna look at we're gonna look at what I was telling you about that tail. So now um, I'm gonna center the tail here with the stick so you can see it work a little bit. Of course, it's only on 40, but 